Well, we're back in the shop. Uh, we have our 07 Chevy Impala jacked up, uh, wheel off, and we've got the bolts hosed down with some penetrating oil. Uh, today's project is going to be to replace the CV axle. Um, one of the boots has a slight rip in it and it's uh, starting to fling grease all over the place. So that will fail soon enough uh, without any grease left in it, of course. We did the brakes and replaced the uh, front hub assembly on this car not that long ago. It could have been then that I did uh, something wrong and pinched that boot somehow, put a little tear in it. So it could have been my fault. Um, I can't see how else it would have got that little small hole in it where it is. Anyways, it still needs to be fixed, so that's what we're going to do. Looks like a fairly straightforward job. Uh, we're going to take out these two bolts here that hold the strut to the uh, steering knuckle. That'll be what we do first. All right, so we've got a 18 mil wrench on the on the bolt and a 21 mil socket on the nut. And I may need a deep socket for that. I'm not sure I have one. Try it without it. Ah. There we go. That wasn't too hard. Yeah. Wrench on the bottom one. These are odd looking um, bolts that hold this on. I'll show you once we get them out. The axle nut, that looks like it's about a 34 mil. We have a 35, that's as close as we got, so we'll use it. Now you don't need an impact to do this, you can do it with uh, you know, a power bar and a socket. Impact does make it a little easier. Um, if, if you're going to use a power bar, you should probably loosen that off while it's on the ground, makes it a lot easier. Um, if not, if you've forgotten, you can always throw uh, a, a screwdriver or something in the veins of your rotor and uh, that will go up against your uh, brake caliper and hold it from spinning that way. Probably easier just to do it when it's on the ground though. That pushes in like it should. Like I said, this is, hasn't been together that long, so it should be in good shape there. If, it, if that is sticking, just put a punch and a hammer, give it a whack, loosen that up. So next we'll knock these out with a hammer. Well, I don't think it has anything to do with the alignment. Uh, that's the head on it. You can see that's a little odd shaped, but it's also got some splines in here to hold it from turning as well. But there's no, no eccentric on it or anything for an alignment. I didn't know. I thought it would be safe, uh, rather be safe than sorry. I'll have to get a punch to get that one out the rest of the way. Seems to be kind of stuck. So we got both of these bolts out. I've just got my punch sitting here now holding it in place. But when we did and um, pulled the steering knuckle forward, it really um, tightened up on this brake line quite a bit. A little more than I'm comfortable with. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop off the uh, tie rod end and we'll be able to swing it this way out of the way a little bit and uh, that should give us a little more room without yanking on that uh, flex line for the brakes. 
That's just a three quarter inch to get the ball, ball joint off. We've already got the cotter pin out. And I think I'm not going to use our pickle fork to get that apart. Um, I don't want to rip and tear the boot. Those are relatively new uh, tie rod ends. I think I'll just use a, a little puller if I can. Managed to, uh, to get this in place here to just push that up. We'll see what we can do. They do make a special puller for this. I don't have one, so we're just making do with what we have. Hopefully it'll work. Maybe we'll give it a tap. Considering it's a tapered fit, it should just pop right off, but But in true crusty Western New York fashion, nothing comes apart that easy. I think my puller's breaking. Yeah, it broke. I'll have to get a different one. Well, we put a different puller on it and we did get it off. I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. So, uh, but it's the same thing as what I was just doing. You, you saw what I was trying to do. So we can pull that out of the way. And we didn't damage the boot, which is a good thing. And that'll just give us a lot more room to, to work in here. Now we should be able to get the axle out of the steering knuckle. Back on a little. Not a lot of extra room, but it does come out. And we're supposed to pry back up against the transmission to snap the axle out. There sure isn't a lot of room in here. All right, so we'll go grab a couple of pry bars. So we've got the big pry bar wedged in here be, be, uh, between the, well, up against the frame, let's say, and then between the transmission and the axle. I tapped it in so it's fairly tight, shouldn't fall out on this. Um, I'm just going to give it a good press with my foot, and uh, hopefully this axle will come out. Lights are going flying, we can't see. All right. Let's... Come on. There. Yep, we got it. Whoa. Everything went flying, but we got it out. We've got both axles on the bench here, and uh, they're the same length and everything. Um, there are a couple small differences. The length of the snout here on the new one is just slightly longer, and the shape of, uh, of this here is a little different. But uh, that's probably just some kind of update. I'm sure it's fine. So we'll get the new one installed. All right, let's give this a try.
Wow, that went right in. Locked in too. That went in a lot simpler than I was expecting. Happy about that. Now, for the other end. There we go, that side's back in as well. Just have to line up our bolts. Put our tie rod back on, our axle nut. We'll be in good shape here. So I've got a screwdriver wedged here in the bottom bolt hole. It's gonna uh, help me line up, because with the spring pressure on here, it's a little bit of a challenge so far. But I think if I can just Get it where it needs to be. Hang on to it for a second. We should be okay. Or not. It's going to be a challenge. There's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know what it is though. And top bolt's almost all the way in. Oh, that doesn't want to move too easy. There we go. Yeah, we'll tighten that up with the impact. This is going to be a little harder to tap on with the brakes here in the way. Let's try to use a punch. line up a little better it'll probably go in a little easier let you see what I'm doing just got a chisel Put our nuts on the other side. And we'll turn our compressor back on, let that charge up, and then we'll zip these down. All right, we'll get these two uh, bolts tightened down with the impact. I had a deep socket. Just the impact kind of hanging off the edge of the socket here. Whatever works. Okay, that should be good and tight. Uh, next we'll put the uh, tie rod end back on. Whoa, 
we need Damien for that, I guess. Here, I'll move the camera. Here's the tie rod end. Got the bolt here, or the nut here, castle nut. Line up the holes for your cotter pin, which I think we were successful with. Here we go. Let's see where we're at there. Gloves don't help this. Most cotter pins have one stem that's a little longer than the other. These don't. Makes it a little easier to, to split them. There we go. Now we'll tighten down the axle nut. When we get the car on the ground, we will uh, we will put a torque wrench on this too. But we'll get it good and snug right now. Well, we're ready to get the wheel back on. <laughs> Just stuck my hand inside the wheel here, and uh, it is full of grease from the from that CV joint. Before I went to the store today to pick up the axle, I looked it up online, like I usually do. Got the part number I thought was right. You know, go down to the local auto parts store. I won't mention AutoZone's name, but um, go in, you know, tell them what vehicle we have, what part we're looking for, and uh, even give them the little piece of paper I have with the part number on it. Well, doesn't the guy say, uh, Oh, that's a dealer-only item. And I look at them and, uh, well, it shows on your website you, you got one. Oh, okay, well, he plunks in a couple more numbers, comes back and says, Oh, yeah, yeah, we got one. And I'm looking at the screen and it's twice the price of what I was looking at. And uh, I said, no, I don't think that's quite right. What I was looking at was uh, 88 bucks and change. Oh, he starts plunking in some more numbers. Oh, here it is, yeah, I got it. You know, off to the back room he goes, comes back a couple minutes later, sets the accident on the table. I know something screwed up, so I double check. I look at the end of the box. Part number's not even friggin' close. And I point out to him, I say, I don't think you got the right part number here. So he punches all the day, everything in on the computer again, and oh, no, yeah, that's right, I got the wrong one. I'll go get it. Hey, sorry about that. Boy, I'll tell you, you got to know what you want when you go to these part stores. I usually look up the part number. You know, that way you know the price too. Look up the part number, maybe I can, I'll compare Napa's price just in case. But uh, AutoZone's a little cheap, a little closer to me, so I usually end up going there. But it's got to watch. That's just on the low setting, so we'll torque those down too when we get it on the ground. The axle nut, the torque I come up with for that, um, is 159, 159 foot-pounds.
But do look it up yourself. Don't trust what I'm telling you. I just looked it up online. And there we go. And I'll back it off to a hundred for the lug nuts. Apparently the impact on its softest setting was just a little more than a hundred foot pounds. Huh. Put a little hubcap back on and job's done. If you like the video uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I've got a couple other Impala videos too, so I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see them. Always looking for more subscribers. Thanks for watching.